Hi everybody, my name is Allie Nickerson and today I'm going to show you how to use Google Classroom for organization. So the way that we can get to Google Classroom, there's a ton of ways. We can find it right here through SSO, we can find it through the waffle, we can find it by going to Google, but the way that I like to do it is I like to type classroom.google.com. So once you get here, this is going to show you all the classes that you're enrolled with. So if your site has a Google Classroom that you're in, it will show up here like it shows up for me. You can see all of the ones that you're teaching and all of the classes that you're enrolled in. If you scroll down, you can also see archived classes. So I'm going to show you one of my archived classes from when I was in the classroom to show you an example. So I'm going to show you how to create a classroom if you've never created one and want to. So I'm going to click Create Class. And I'm going to call this Miss Nickerson 2324. You can say which section, subject, and room number. So I don't have any of that. I'm not going to put it. I'm just going to put the name of the class. Now that my class is created, I can see that I can create a Google Meet link. So if I want to meet with students virtually, I can do that. I can have a class code, so this is how students can join, is with this code. Um, students will be able to see upcoming due dates on assignments that are coming up. You can customize your picture here. You can select a theme, so if I want my classroom to be purple, you can do that. I know some teachers, like in elementary, who teach reading, math, writing, they have a different color for each class that correlates to their notebook that they use or something like that. So up at the top here, we have all of our options. So the first one is the stream. The way that I like to explain this to people is that this is like your Facebook wall or your Twitter feed. This is where you can quickly send out announcements to your students. So you can say, you know, we're gonna have a substitute tomorrow. Your assignments are posted. You can post a link if you want students to access the link really quick, and you can just post it to your class. So you can give it to all students, or you can pick individual students who you want to see this. I don't have any students in this classroom yet, so that's why it's not giving me that option. If I wanted to send out a message to my small group reading, and it's a specific small group reading, I only want four kids to get it, it's a link to an assignment that I have for them, I can just select their names and post the link. You can add a drive file, a YouTube video, upload your own file, or a link to whatever you want to give them. So please do this for homework. And then you could link their assignment. The next tab that we have is the classwork tab. The next tab is the classwork tab, and this is where you can really get organized. So Google Classroom is an LMS, a learning management system. And so the point of it is to be organized and house everything for students in one place. So that way you can be organized and students can be organized. It's very simple. So under classwork, I'm going to show you an example first before we get started. So here is my Google Classroom from when I was a teacher, and in the stream here you can see when I would post. So I posted, don't forget to bring your Chromebook back, because it was the end of the year. I posted a mindfulness activity for students. Under classwork, this is how I had everything organized. So at the very top, I had our daily schedule and where to go when I'm absent, so that never really happened, but students would know how to find a substitute. Um, I liked to organize it by week, so I taught third grade. I felt like this was the easiest way to split it up for students. So I had the date on here, and I would have our grammar, um, I had our reading, math, everything was posted here so students knew all that they had to do was click on the day of the week and then click on the right assignment. Students were able to comment on it if they had questions. They were also able to send me individual comments on individual assignments. So it was really easy for me to be able to communicate with students even when we were virtual, but that's gonna be even easier now that we're back in person. This was how I decided to organize my Google Classroom. You can organize it any way that you want. Now back to the class that I just created to create what I had there, I'm going to show you. So they're broken up by what's called topics. So if I wanted to make week one a topic, now Google has created week one. And I'll do week two as well. 
These are basically your overarching categories. And then if I wanted to create an assignment for students, I'd give it a title. So if I said, this is your reading for the day, I could attach a drive file, a YouTube video, I could upload a video of me teaching, then I can assign it and drag it under whichever week I want. And everything in Google is very intuitive. You can drag and drop everything that you want to. So don't worry about having it in the right order. You can always switch the order of things. You can also create a quiz and that's gonna bring you to a Google form to create. You can add a question for students. If you just wanna quickly see how students are feeling about something, you can ask like, do we need to review this math topic and students can reply. You can just post material. That means that students won't have anything to submit. So if you have like a PDF of a reading that you're going over in class that you don't want students to necessarily submit anything with, you can just post that as material. And the newest feature that I absolutely love is this reuse post. If you have a method to your organization, like every topic, there's gonna to be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can reuse the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it will be set up exactly the same wherever you put it. So that is a really awesome tool. You just have to switch out the files, but otherwise it will keep all the instructions, the formatting, everything will be the same. And then if you want to add more topics for more weeks or however you decide to organize it, this is where you add the topic. Under the People tab, this is where you can see who is a teacher who's a student. So if you want to add co-teachers, so if you do departmentalize and you want your co-teachers to, to have access, you can do that. I know even in my third grade classroom, I invited my teammates as co-teachers so that way we just always knew what was being posted and we kept it consistent across the grade level. This icon right here is how you can invite students. So if you click this button, it will give you a copy link of how to join this Google Classroom. I think the quickest way would be to copy that link and send it out through Relay Classroom to all of your students and they will instantly have access to your classroom. And the last tab here is the grades tab. So as soon as you post assignments that are able to be graded, you can go in here and it's like a little virtual grade book. You can plug in grades for students. You can have students resubmit assignments so that way you can regrade them if they make corrections. This is your little virtual grade book and students will be able to see their grades on assignments. The only thing is you do need to input grades into Synergy as well because Synergy is where our report cards are generated. This is how to use Google Classroom to stay organized in your classroom. I highly suggest every teacher uses Google Classroom. I think it's super beneficial from like second or third grade on to be organized and have your students know exactly what's expected of them. So your task is to either create a Google Classroom or if you already have one, create a Google Classroom topic or assignment and take a screenshot and upload it to our Jamboard so that way we can get ideas from each other. I know that my way of setting up Google Classroom isn't the only way, so it would be awesome for everybody to learn from each other. So thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see your screenshots.